Today I'm making three different herbal healing recipes for the bathtub using ingredients mostly from the garden that you can grow yourself. One recipe to relax, one recipe to unwind but stay alert and the other is to heal. Hi guys and welcome back to Moat Cottage Homesteady. The first recipe we'll be making is relax. So I've got some Epsom salts and I'll be adding one and a half cups of Epsom salts into my bowl. The dried plant matter we'll be using is rose petals. I always choose rose petals that have a really good scent and I dry them out in paper bags. We've got some lavender, rosemary, which has the flowers as well in this case because they're in season at the moment. But just the leaves is fine. All dehydrated. The rosemary was dehydrated on the dehydrated trays Dehydrated lemon peel, which I'll have to cut up a little bit. I do have a video on how to dehydrate lemon peel. If you want to watch that video, I'll leave it in the description below. And I've also got a tablespoon of rose powder, which is the dehydrated rose petals blended up and it's such a concentrated smell. It's so intense that the whole room will smell like roses if you've chosen a really good smelling rose. Give that a good mix up. The bigger herbs will have a tendency to sit up the top. Get any lumps out of those Epsom salts. And if you have too many big bits, you can chop them up a little bit more as well. Beautiful. Oh, it smells amazing. To use the relaxing bath blend, I put three quarters of a cup to a cup in the bathtub. It depends on the size of the bath, obviously. And then I add in one and a half tablespoons of the olive oil. I don't add that into the dry mixture because you don't want it to go mouldy. Also you don't want all these ingredients going down the drain so you will need to scoop them all up before you pull the plug. Or you can use a calico bag or a net bag, something where the ingredients won't fall out of and you can fill up the bag with your ingredients to the amount you want and then it can sit in there like a tea bag and the Epsom salts will dissolve in, you'll have your magnesium which will be very relaxing and of course all the herbs which will smell amazing and be very healing. Of course you will need to label it if you're making up a few different types of batches because you want to know what it is. If you're going to store them like this you do need to keep them sealed so moisture doesn't get in. Mm, it's so good. Next up is the unwind and stay alert recipe. We add in one and a half cups of the Epsom salts. This recipe is for if you want to wash off the day but you still have things to do. You might want to study in the evening or you've got somewhere to go. So you still need to be alert. So we're adding in some dried mint leaves. And they usually crush up quite easily. You can use the stems as well, we just need to chop them up. The dehydrated plant matter that you're using in your herbal remedies, you want it to be less than 12 months old. So I always try and collect all the different bits and pieces every year so that I have a supply of the dried herbs and peel so that I can use it in different recipes for medicinal purposes. The dehydrated orange peel it's a bit easier than the lemon peel and it breaks right up by hand. A little bit easier than the lemon peel, which is a bit uh, tougher. Give that a mix in. To use the unwind and stay alert bath salts, it's the same as using the relaxation bath salts. You add about three quarters of a cup to one cup in a bath, depending on the size. 
let that dissolve in and you can skim up any floating bits at the end of your bath. You can also use them in the calico bags as well, just to save you that trouble of collecting all the bits and pieces at the end of the bath if you don't want to. Also adding a tablespoon and a half of olive oil to the bath every time you have a bath when you're using the salts. Next up is the healing bath recipe and I've got one cup of rolled oats in my Nutribullet blender and I'm going to add in the echinacea flowers. I'll remove off any petals because they'll look nice at the end just floating on top. So we'll put those petals in there. Same with the calendula, all the petals can go in and any big bits of centre of flowers can go in the blender. I don't blend it up too much. I don't need it to be really fine, but it is all blended up. And then mix those flower petals in. With the healing bath recipe, I would add the whole cup to one bath. And don't have the water too hot when it's a healing bath because you don't want to flare up any inflammation or any skin issues that you might have. You want it to be just a bit cooler than the other two baths. Make sure you stay well hydrated when you're having your baths as well, before, during and after. You don't need to add the olive oil to the healing bath. If you need an emergency bath, you can make this fresh with all fresh plant matter. However, use twice as much as what's in the recipe, which I will leave in the description below. And also you can't store it if you're using wet ingredients because obviously it will go moldy. All of these recipes will store for about 12 months. So long as you've used freshly dehydrated produce, that's not over 12 months old in itself because you want all the healing properties to be in the herbs and peel and they'll be there if you're not using old stock. That's why it's good to grow your own. And obviously you need to have them in sealed containers so that they don't absorb moisture into them. For those of you following our recent challenges, Nikki is doing really well since her accident. She has gone back to work and her face is all healed up with using the St. John's wart oil and I'm really happy with the way that's healed up. You wouldn't even know. She has had a few internal issues since and is working on them as well. So thanks for all your kind messages, love and support and prayers. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.